Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is Git Cursor Delta. Let's go ahead and look at the note itself, and it's right here. It takes an input of a pointer event, and it's going to return back a vector 2D structure, which is an X and a Y. And it's going to return basically the distance the mouse traveled since the last event was handled. What this means is, right now I'm triggering it on my mouse move, and you can pretty much ignore the rest of this. All I'm doing is checking and making sure I'm only printing out a movement on the mouse move, rather than if it's not moving at all. So when I hit play and I move my mouse around, well, you can see. If I move my mouse to the right and try to keep as steady as possible, you notice only the X moves. And depending on how much I move it, we have a greater delta. So a large jump from frame to frame, it's going to give me back large values. You can see things like 40s and 30s. And very small movement is going to give me, you know, one or two pixels at a time. Same thing with the Y, obviously. And of course, the more you move it, the more delta you have. The delta is basically how much it changed between the last frame. And honestly, that's it. That's what this node does. If we actually look at the node itself, you can find that the git, uh, where is it at? Cursor delta right here, returns the distance the mouse traveled since the last event was handled. All the code does behind the scenes is take the last screen position, subtract the current screen position, and return back the value. So again, it's really simple. It just takes from the last time input was handled to now and gives you back the difference. Now, one thing to note, I have an image over everything, and that is where I'm getting my input from. When you're doing things like this, like trying to see how much the mouse has moved, maybe you're using this to simulate touch input events and things like that, you need to make sure that those events, like this one, the mouse move and getting the delta, they're only going to fire off if they have something accepting input. If I take this image, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide it, and then we're going to run our example. Well, I have no information now. I have it when it's over the text, and I have it when it's over the button, because these things both accept input. However, this back here is nothing. There's no picture. It's just dead space. So there's no way to get event data. So keep that in mind if you're trying to do something overarching and uh, uh, capturing everything on the screen, make sure you have something actually catching it. In this case, I had an image that was simply set behind everything, and it's set up to basically be invisible with no alpha, but it's still there, and that means anywhere I don't have input, like anywhere it's blank, it's still gonna, the image is still gonna catch it. So that's it, that's what our get cursor delta node does. Grabs the input event, grabs the difference between the last input and the current input's location and returns it back in an int structure. Remember an int structure is just simply a x and a y float value. 